humoral regulation is performed by hormones and different chemical molecules such as metabolites, ion, for example, calcium accelerates the cardiac activity by um, many by biochemicals uh, which may attenuate the body functions. Uh, hormones are produced by endocrine cells in endocrine glands, but not only, in different organs like stomach, there we have hormone gastrin, in kidneys, erythropoietin, and so on. So we may speak about diffuse endocrine system or EPUD system that is produced by diffuse endocrine cells which may be found in any organ which produce the hormones which uh, are involved in the humoral regulation. The hormones may be classified into several groups in accordance with their chemical structure. It may be peptides, for example, hormone insulin, may be amino acids, derivatives of amino acids, amino acids, and steroids, and steroids, and steroid hormones. Uh, these different types uh, may have different effect upon the functions of the cell. Uh, by the way, examples, amino acids, for example, epinephrine or adrenaline, it's the same, adrenaline, and steroids, for example, testosterone or cortisol. Cortisol. L. Okay, uh, peptides are hydrophilic hormones, therefore, they bind to the membrane receptors, so they bind to the superficial membrane receptors and then they activate the cascades of second messengers molecules that regulate the cellular functions. Such second messengers are, for example, cyclic AMP, inositol phosphate 3 calcium maybe the second messenger molecules and so on so they change the function of the cytoplasmic enzymes and the cellular response is regulated by such a manner Steroid hormones like cortisol, they are hydrophobic, so they can go inside the cell, they can penetrate the cellular membrane, then they may even translocate to the nucleus and they may change the transcription of DNA, so they may change the activity of genome and by such a manner they may regulate the activity of RNA RNA and it may lead to the synthesis of new peptides 
and proteins. So the cell is regulated in a more deep substantial manner by such steroid hormones. So peptides usually bind to the membrane receptors, steroids may go inside and may uh, regulate the genetic code. Uh, a few more words about the second messengers and cyclic AMP. Uh, there is so-called adenylate cyclase system. So when hormone binds to the receptor, it activates G protein. G protein that activates the adenylate cyclase, an enzyme that converts ATP, that is usually utilized as an energy resource. So ATP is converted into the cyclic AMP that was mentioned already as a second messenger molecule. And cyclic AMP activates protein kinases. Protein kinases inactive, it brings, it converts to protein kinases activated form. What protein kinases do? They add the phosphoric acid to different enzymes. And by such a manner, protein kinases may activate different enzymes of the cell. And the cellular response is based on this activation. So this system utilizes cyclic AMP as a second messenger, and it is called adenylate cyclase system. The types of hormonal uh, and humoral effects. So we may distinguish so-called autocrine effects when the cell releases the hormone that may act upon the same cell. This is called autocrine effect. The cell may produce hormone that affects the cells in the neighborhood in the close vicinity. This is called paracrine effect. Paracrine. And uh, the cell may uh, produce hormone that may be released into the bloodstream and may affect the cells that are far away. This is called telecrine or endocrine effect. The hormones may interact with each other they may have antagonistic effect, they may be antagonists, for example, insulin and glucagon. Insulin decreases sugar level in the blood, glucagon increases. The hormones may have synergetic effect, synergy, for example, glucagon and epinephrine both increase sugar level in the blood. And there is third possibility permissive effect when one hormone doesn't affect the function but in the presence of another hormone the function is regulated by the first one for example uh, t3 and t4 the hormones of thyroid gland uh, they directly do not produce an effect upon the heart, but they increase the sensitivity of the heart to epinephrine. So, in the presence of T3 and T4, low doses of epinephrine will accelerate the cardiac activity. So, normal effect of T3 and T4 is acceleration of the cardiac activity. Uh, the hormones 
are synthesized from precursors for example uh, amino acid tyrosine tyrosine by the enzyme tyrosine hydroxylase is converted into the dope dopa dopa is converted into dopamine dopamine and dopamine is then converted into the norepinephrine and norepinephrine is converted into the epinephrine or adrenaline The hormones are transported in blood in the free form and predominantly in the complex, in the form of complex with proteins or with the form elements of the blood. For steroid hormones, the problem of transport is especially acute because they are hydrophobic and uh, for example cortisol is transported by special protein uh, transcortin special proteins are responsible for the transport of t3 and t4 the hormones of the thyroid gland and uh, such uh, um, complex also may produce the physiological reserve of hormone uh, that can be used when it is needed. At the same time, uh, the binding form of hormone, when the hormone binds the proteins, for, for example, albumins, they are typical proteins that may serve as a transport proteins. So such binding form is protected from destruction because, ends, uh, because uh, hormones at the end are destroyed by enzymes especially in the liver where the hormones terminate their lifespan but uh, when the hormones are in the binding form with proteins they are in some respect protected from the uh, enzymes pancreas pancreas is the gland with mixed type of secretion it is in this in, in some respect exocrine gland because it produces different uh, enzymes for digestion for gastrointestinal tract and in some respect it is endocrine gland because it produces several hormones uh, A cells of endocrine part of pancreas produce glucagon. Now, glucagon um, it increases the sugar level, the glucose level in the blood. So when uh, the organism uh, do not when, when, when it doesn't receive uh, nutrition, the glucagon supports the nutrients, the glucose level in the blood. So it increases the glucose level in the blood. B cells of the pancreas, they release insulin. The insulin that vice versa is released after the consumption of food and insulin opens the gates for glucose to the cells so by this way it increases it decreases the sugar level in the blood uh, and um, it feeds the cells with sugar with glucose 
uh, and also we have D cells in the pancreas that releases somatostatin that performs different uh, effects for example uh, this hormone is involved in the regulation of uh, the production of the growth hormone next gland that we will discuss is thyroid gland uh, thyroid gland uh, it releases T3 thyroidine T4 thyroxine and also it releases calcitonin effects T3 and T4 are extremely intensively intensifies the intensify the metabolism the metabolic rate especially accelerating catabolism so these hormones they increase catabolism catabolism is the breakdown of substances of complex substances they are burned for energy they increase the production of ATP by burning carbohydrates proteins fats in the body in such respect they may be called stress hormones on the other hand it, as it was mentioned already they accelerate the cardiac activity the pulse rate the cardiac activity in, is, in, is, in, is accelerated they uh, by increasing catabolism they increase the the, the the temperature of the body they may when they are produced induce fever they has an, they have they have an effect upon the nervous system the, uh, when uh, they produced in the in the large quantity they may induce nervousness of a person nervousness and uh, they are involved in the mental development in the childhood and uh, in the uh, in the growth of the body calcitonin it decreases the calcium level in the blood it decreases calcium level in the blood by putting calcium into the bones so the calcium concentration in bones increases by calcitonin and bones became more rigid but the blood concentration of calcium decreases there is antagonist of calcium that is called parathyroid hormone it is produced in parathyroid glands they are located in the vicinity of thyroid gland and parathyroid hormone it is also called parat hormone it increases the calcium level in the blood uh, and uh, calcium is released by bones so bones is a depot of calcium and calcium is very important for blood clotting and uh, nerve impulses uh, 
conduction in, in, in synapses and so on. So calcium level is important for uh, the functioning of the body. And the calcitriol is another factor that regulates calcium level. Calcitriol is an active form of vitamin D that is extremely important for the normal calcium concentration in the blood. Adrenal gland. Adrenal gland is in fact produced by two different types of cells. Adrenal gland is produced by the adrenal medulla, adrenal medulla that releases epinephrine and in some quantity norepinephrine which is as we call may be called adrenaline and noradrenaline so adrenaline is the hormone of stress adrenaline accelerates the, the activity of the heart it dilates the bronchus it dilates the pupil it accelerates the catabolism adrenaline down regulates the gastrointestinal tract motility and secretion uh, adrenaline releases the viscous saliva in the oral cavity so uh, adrenaline is used to start the cardiac activity for in the ambulance for reanimation so adrenaline is generally speaking the stress hormone adrenal cortex adrenal cortex is produced by several layers we may draw number two to remember the names of these layers superficial layer zona glomerulosa zona glomerulosa here mineral corticoids are produced mineral corticoids for example aldosterone 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 regulates the activity of reabsorption in the kidneys so it decreases the production of urine in kidneys so the target is kidney for aldosterone next layer zona fasciculata you see fasciculata it means the bundle bundles uh, and it resembles bundles this part resemble bundles zona fasciculata it produces glucocorticoids glucocorticoids an example is cortisol 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 is also important stress hormone like adrenaline cortisol increases catabolism intensively the breakdown of substances cortisol 
it's it is important to remember it in large amounts suppresses the immune system that's why glucocorticoids and their derivatives in pharmacology are used as important factors for down regulation for suppression of immunity of immune system to cure allergies autoimmune diseases this is very effective way by prescribing glucocorticoids to suppress immune system at the same time cortisol activates the cardiac activity as t3 and t4 increasing the sensitivity of the heart to adrenaline cortisol also increases the sugar level in the blood that is important for stress to cope with stress an organism should have high glucose level in the blood for energy and the most deep layer of the adrenal cortex is zona reticularis zona reticularis it looks it resembles reticulum here you see the reticulum like net so zona reticularis produces sex hormones sex hormones for example androgens soft androgens are also produced in female organism in the adrenal cortex in the zona reticularis zona reticulata in the brain uh, we have another endocrine gland epiphysis is produced in darkness at night and it helps to adapt to the day night cycle it may be prescribed and used by people for fast adaptation to the jet lag when people are flying east or west changing uh, the hour zones and also in the brain there is the structure that is called hypothalamus hypothalamus is the most important part of the brain that is responsible for the regulation of different endocrine glands we may call hypothalamus a conductor in the orchestra because hypothalamus produces releasing factors so-called releasing factors The releasing factors are divided into the liberins, liberins, and statins. Liberins activate the function of pituitary gland that is located close to hypothalamus. And pituitary gland, pituitary gland. Is divided into the anterior and the posterior lobe anterior lobe is called adenohypophysis so hypophysis and pituitary gland it is the same and the posterior lobe of pituitary gland is called neurohypophysis neurohypophysis liberins and statins produce an effect upon the anterior lobe of the pituitary gland 
Liberines intensify and statins decrease the production of hormones of the pituitary gland. Some of these hormones affect other endocrine glands and they are called tropic hormones. For example, in the anterior lobe of pituitary gland, TSH hormone is produced. That is called thyroid stimulating hormone. It affects thyroid gland. Another hormone is called LH, luteinizing hormone, with FSH, follicle stimulating hormone, LH regulates the gonads, the glands that produce sex hormones. Another tropic hormone is called ACTH, adrenocorticotropic hormone. It affects the adrenal gland, adrenocorticotropic hormone. Also here we have so much, so uh, we have growth hormone, growth hormone that regulates the body growth. We have also other hormones, for example, melanocyte stimulating hormones and some other factors. So we will indicate that ACTH stimulates the adrenal gland and adrenal gland produces cortisol in response to the ACTH and in response to the hypothalamic factor that is called CRH corticotropine releasing Hormone is just an example of liberin, corticotropin releasing hormone. And in this system, we have many feedbacks, feedback mechanisms. An example if the level of cortisol increases, then cortisol by short negative feedback will decrease the production of ACTH. Long feedback link if the level of cortisol is excessive then hypothalamus will decrease the production of liberin of CRH. Therefore normalizing the level of cortisol. The same feedback mechanisms may be observed with other pituitary gland hormones, for example with TSH. As you may imagine, if TSH concentration is excessive, then, oh uh, sorry, if t, uh, TSH, TSH increases the production of T3 and T4 in thyroid gland. If T3 and T4 in the blood are found in a large amount, in a large concentration, then TSH concentration decreases and thyroliberin in hypothalamus also will decrease, therefore normalizing the level of T3 and the T4. Again, we can illustrate it on this picture. We have hypothalamus, we have pituitary gland, and we have adrenal gland here, and the release of cortisol. Again, if the cortisol level is excessive, then feedback mechanism affects the anterior pituitary and it decreases the ACTH production. ACTH decreases and in hypothalamus CRH production decreases at the end normalizing the level of the cortisol. 
This system is called HPA axis, hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. So we've spoken about anterior pituitary and now we will discuss the role of posterior lobe of pituitary gland that is called neurohypophysis. The posterior lobe of the pituitary gland it does not secrete but releases in the bloodstream two peptide hormones. It's vasopressin it's vasopressin and it's oxytocin. Vasopressin is also called ADH. It means antidiuretic hormone. Antidiuretic hormone affects the, the production of urine. It decreases the urine production. And also it may constrict blood vessels. That's why it is called vasopressin. Oxytocin is the hormone that stimulates the contraction of utero of uterus of um, in the uh, mammal gland uh, it accelerates milk ejection uh, and it has beh behavioral effects uh, producing the feeling of trust uh, between uh, people and uh, inducing the behavior of careness uh, wish to, ta to take care of somebody these hormones are released in the blood in the blood from the neurons the neurons are located in the hypothalamus and the axons of these neurons project to the posterior lobe of the pituitary gland and here the hormones vasopressin and oxytocin uh, 